Welcome to downtown Austin, Texas. My name is Chris Clary. I work with Nation Tours. We're going to be demonstrating how a Segway PT operates and also a little bit of safety information that you can use whenever you're taking a tour in one of our cities throughout the United States. This demonstration does not replace the actual one-on-one -on -one training that you will receive with a experienced tour guide from Segway Nation. The Segway PT i2 is the newest model debuted by Segway Inc. in 2007. And the purpose of this video is an orientation for guests that have usually never seen a Segway in action um, to answer any frequently asked questions about Segways that our guests sometimes have and provide a basic level of safety training whenever you're actually going around the city on your Segway. This video is not a substitute for watching a live demo before your tour from a trained tour guide and is intended to be a basic overview of how a Segway PT operates. Um, here we have a Segway personal transporter i2 version and it's one of the only self-balancing technologies in the world. It balances on two wheels, even though I'm really doing nothing to make it balance. Uh, it works with five gyroscopes and two independent motors, one in each wheel to keep balance. To go forward on your Segway, you simply lean forward. You wanna keep your body nice and straight when you lean forward. And to stop, you wanna lean back lightly. So if you lean forward lightly, you're gonna be propelled forward. And if you lean back, you're gonna to come to a stop. Now the reason you're going forward is actually four little pads underneath your feet, two of them under your toes actually tell you to go tell the machine to go forward. The other two in the rear tell you to come to a stop. So if you lean forward, there's pressure being transferred to your toes. Leaning back, sends pressure to your heels. And like I said earlier, you want to keep your body nice and straight. The faster you want to go, the harder you lean forward. And the faster you want to stop, the harder you lean back. And I'll demonstrate that again, body's nice and straight, leaning forward lightly, leaning back lightly. Now to make an abrupt stop, as we call it, when you've got a lot of speed, you need to come to a stop right away, and your tour guide will actually help you, tra train, you train you with an abrupt stop in person. You wanna lean forward to pick up speed, and you wanna lean back, kind of bending your knees, dropping your butt, extending your arms a little bit, that's gonna help you come to a stop faster than you would by simply leaning back lightly. And your tour guide will actually show you in person uh, how to best do that. To stand still on your Segway, if you look at my feet, you wanna keep your feet basically in the middle of the foot pads as close as you can. And that's gonna help you keep a neutral position. Your tour guide will actually help you perfect that neutral position. And a couple things about a Segway is, one, you never wanna go backwards on your Segway more than a couple of inches. And if you can hear that little growling sound, that's the Segway growling at me, I like to call it that. Others call it the stick shake warning whenever it makes that vibrating noise. Um, I like to call it growling because just like a dog, when you're doing something that doesn't like it's going to growl at you, the Segway doesn't like that, so it's going to make that growling sound at you. That basically means that you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Right For new guests, you always want to keep both hands on your Segway at all times. When you turn left, you want to pull gently with your left hand. When you turn right, you want to pull gently with your right hand. It's kind of a down and away motion, and some of my tour guides say it's like, pretend like you're going around a hula hoop around your waist, but you want to pull with your left hand, pull with your right hand. You don't need very much pressure, and I'll demonstrate this, although don't try this at home <laughs> or on a tour. You can actually turn with one finger all the way around. That's all the pressure you need is in one finger will turn you in 360 degrees. And it's pretty amazing because both wheels will turn independently of each other to actually show you a zero degree turn. Now turning in motion, just like driving a car, you always wanna slow down, you know, hit your brakes a little bit before you come to a stop. And I'll demonstrate that now. I'm gonna gain a little bit of speed. I'm gonna slow down before I make my turns. To demonstrate that again, I'm gonna gain some speed. I'm gonna slow down. And then I'm going to make my turn. Just like a car, bike, or anything else that you drive, you always want to slow down before you make turns. Now, your tour got to go through this in a little bit more in detail. But whenever you're going through the city, we have quite a large area here. Most sidewalks throughout downtown of most cities don't have this much space. So you always want to stay in the middle of the, any area that we're traveling through. Sidewalks, plazas, any other areas. You want to stay in the middle. That helps give pedestrians room on either side of us to walk, but it also keeps you away from potential hazards such as losing traction in the grass, muddy terrain, sandy terrain that's sometimes on the inside of sidewalks. If you're in the middle of the sidewalk, we don't even have to worry about 
grassy areas or bushy areas. I'll demonstrate on this side where there's a line of bushes. Obviously, we don't want to get too close to bushes, trees, other objects, because you can run into these things. So we'll always, on our tour, ask that our guests try to stay as close to the middle of the sidewalk as possible. That's almost always the safest place to be. Now to dismount your Segway and to step off and on, I'll show you this. To step on your Segway, what we do, we'll always help you step on and off, but we realize some guests, especially those that have ridden before, want to get off and on on their own. And I'll demonstrate this with an individual a little bit later on in the video. You always want to make sure that you're holding on to the Segway with two hands, one, hand, one, one foot at a time in the middle of the foot pad, pick yourself up other foot in the middle of the footbed and make sure that your feet are relatively even and that's how you step on your Segway. You don't want to put too much pressure in the handlebar when stepping up. You don't want to use this as support for your body as you can see. That's how you turn the Segway so you don't want to turn the Segway while you're stepping onto it. So grab it relatively close to the middle, step on with one foot, step on with the other foot and when you step off you don't want to scoot your feet off the back. Just like you're stepping off stairs, take one foot off, take the other foot off and make sure you don't let go of your Segway because I like to say it's always in drive. You always want to keep at least one hand on the Segway at all times. This is a quick video of how we actually demo Segways for our guests. Uh, this doesn't substitute for actually paying attention during your training time with your tour guide, but if you will go ahead and lean forward again for me. There you go, a little bit faster. Now lean back for me and stand up straight. There you go. If you notice, he leaned back a little bit harder because he had a little bit more speed going. And pull with your left hand, Brian. Excellent. Go ahead and come forward. And go ahead and make another stop for me. There you go. And if you notice, Brian's got both hands on his Segway PT. Go ahead and pull with your right hand. He's pulling gently with his right hand to make a turn. Go ahead and come to a stop. And let's make a 360 turn. He can make a 360 degree turn while standing in one place. Go ahead and come towards me. A little faster, faster. A little bit quicker stop. There you go. If you noticed on the faster stop, Brian actually bent his knees a little bit, got his butt out a little bit, and also straightened his arms. That's going to help you come to a stop because you're going to get more pressure on the two heel foot pads on the back of the Segway. Now if you notice, Brian's been standing still for quite some time. That's because his feet are even and he's just standing straight up. A Segway is self-balancing, so you're always going to move around a little bit back and forth. You will never be perfectly still. This little bit of movement here, that's actually normal. Go ahead and come towards me again. There you go. Let's make a turn this way. There you go. Excellent. Go ahead and come to a stop. Now as for when we train you how to make turns, if you notice, Brian was going relatively fast. He slowed down before he made his turn. And you always want to kind of keep your knees loose when you make those turns or when hitting bumps or anything else. Go ahead and turn this way for me, Brian and hang out right there for a second. We're gonna do an abrupt stop, in which case I'm gonna get Brian to pick up a lot of speed and come right towards me. Go ahead and come right at me, Brian. Go ahead and I'll stand up straight. Now, that's an abrupt stop. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth, if you notice. There was a little bit of rocking in there, um, but if you didn't notice, he got his knees very bent, got his butt and his shoulders back, had his arms extended. That's gonna allow you to get a lot of your body weight onto your heels you're going to come to a stop much quicker than you would by just leaning back lightly. Now to step off of your Segway, um, go and stay right there for a second, Brian. You want to step off one foot at a time and go ahead. There you go. He steps off one foot at a time. He doesn't scoot his feet back or anything like that. And you never want to let a Segway go because as Brian will demonstrate, if he just lets his Segway go, what's going to happen? Your Segway is always in drive. So what you want to do is always make sure to have one hand on your Segway PT at all times. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Now, as we're making our way on a sidewalk or a street level, like here at the Capitol, what I want to do is always enter intersections through the crosswalk, and we'll always try to maintain in the middle of any area that we're in. As you notice, we have lots of room on either side, the reason we want to stay in the middle of this street is that way if pedestrians come out of one of the elevators, one of the doorways, if a bicycle comes out from an area where we couldn't see them before, they approach us very quickly. So if our tour groups are in the middle of the sidewalk, middle of the road, uh, middle of wherever they're at, it allows bicyclists, pedestrians, joggers, 
plenty of room to get around it. So we'll always try to stay in the middle of the sidewalks and streets that we're gonna go through. Anytime we enter a sidewalk, we always wanna enter up a crosswalk. Again, always be aware of pedestrians. We wanna give pedestrians the right of way at any point in time. And again, like I mentioned earlier, we'll always stay in the middle of the sidewalk. I always say there's a line in the middle of most sidewalks. We'll almost try to follow that line. We'll watch out for potential hazards such as grassy areas, curbs like this one. Give yourself a couple feet of space between you and curbs, you and grassy areas, trash can, benches. If you stay in the middle of the sidewalk, you'll stay away from most of the potential hazards. Give yourself plenty of room between bicyclists, pedestrians, bushes, etc. When we enter an intersection, you always want to stay in the middle of the wheelchair ramp and always let your tour guide enter the intersection first. That way they can look out for potential hazards such as cars, bicyclists, pedestrians, pedicabs. Always stay in the middle of the wheelchair ramp. That way your tire doesn't clip one of the curbs. And when you exit, always make sure that you exit right up the middle of the falling wheelchair ramp. We're gonna go over the speed governor or the speed limiter of the Segway. It kicks in at about 12 and a half miles an hour. Um, basically, before we go into it, you always wanna keep a little bit of space between yourself and the bar. Uh, usually about four to six inches or so. You don't want your body actually touching the bar. Whenever you hit your speed governor, it's actually gonna pick up on you and try to slow you down. That's actually a safety mechanism designed into the Segway. That way you don't reach unsafe speeds. I'm gonna demonstrate a governor kicking in at 12 and a half miles an hour. We're gonna speed up very quickly. The handlebar is gonna pick up and we simply wanna lean away from the bar, bend your knees a little bit and put pressure in your heels like you would do at any other stop. And I'll demonstrate that again. I'm gonna lean into it. It's gonna kick up on me. Just lean back, push yourself away, bend your knees and put pressure in your heels. You'll come to a stop fairly quickly as long as you put pressure in your heels and push yourself away from the handlebar. Back to the speed governor, we're gonna demonstrate what not to do when a speed governor kicks in, and that's try to overpower it. I'm gonna try to overpower the speed governor, and if you notice, the Segway starts picking up even further. The speed governor will not let you overpower it. It's gonna keep you at about 12 and a half miles an hour, so come to a stop, and you wanna slow down, just like you would at any other time on tour. So always make sure if that speed governor kicks in, bring yourself to a slow stop or slow your speed to a normal safe speed rather than trying to overpower that speed limiter. Um, you always wanna stay plenty of room away from bushes, benches, grassy areas, and always be cognizant of what's going on in front of you, much like driving a car, riding a bike, because unexpected obstacles might enter, such as this right here. Anytime you pass an area such as this, you always wanna slow down to a walking pace. Come through it nice and easy, reestablish yourself in the middle of the sidewalk, and continue on at a nice, safe speed. So anytime you're going up or down a hill, again, you want to stay in the middle of the sidewalk and always take your time. You never want to rush up or down a hill too fast. And anytime you're approaching this pedestrian in front of you, you we'll always want to slow down to a very slow walking pace. Give the pedestrians plenty of room and always be respectful and courteous to pedestrians. How are you doing today, sir? All right, I'm going to demonstrate how to properly go down a hill. Because we're going downhill, much like a car or bike, you're going to have a lot of extra momentum behind you. You always want to keep your speed to a nice slow walking pace and keep a little bit of pressure on your heels as you're going down the hill. You don't want to lean into it and gain too much speed too quickly. So always keep your body nice and straight, a little, a little bit of your weight on your heels and head down nice and safe. All right, and we're downtown in a major city, so obviously we're gonna see many pedestrians. Anytime we come to a pedestrian on the sidewalk, always let your tour guide pass the pedestrian first, and always be respectful and courteous and give them the right of way. I'm sorry, sir, we're gonna pass you right along the right-hand side. How are you doing today? Excellent, always give the pedestrian a couple of feet of room, and then keep your speed at a nice slow walk. All right, when we enter an intersection, we're always gonna to wanna to use the crosswalk, and we're gonna wait for the walk signal to appear. Always allow your tour guide to be the first person to enter the intersection. They're going to watch out for cars, pedestrians, bicycles. And as a wait for the white light to turn on, the walk signal. There we are. The tour guide's always going to be the first one to enter the intersection. There we go. Always wait for them to go first. There we go. Always stay in the middle of the crosswalk, just as if you're walking uh, normally. And enter through the middle of the wheelchair ramp and then continue on the middle of the sidewalk. Segway is a registered trademark of Segway Incorporated of New Hampshire. And remember to always wear a helmet when riding your Segway. 
uh, whether you own your Segway or you're on a tour. And also, all guests before tours must sign a liability waiver.